and there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. In the previous study, I brought in the passages from Revelation chapter 12 and proposed that the great red dragon symbolizes the religious system of the Jews that existed in the days of Christ. How did I arrive at such an idea? I'll do my best to explain. First of all, note that the dragon has seven heads and ten horns. When we go to Revelation 13.1, John sees a beast rise up out of the sea having the same seven heads and ten horns. First a dragon, then a beast, both with seven heads and ten horns. So one must ask, why the difference? Are they the same entity representing the same thing? I believe the seven heads and ten horns remain the same, but there is a good reason why the first is a dragon and the second a beast. The dragon is clearly identified as that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. We then read that he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Many believe that this casting out of the dragon defines Lucifer's rebellion, along with a third of the angels, but this makes no logical sense at all. What is pictured in Revelation 12 did not take place before Adam's creation. Instead, I am inclined to go with the following. Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Do you see it? Jesus beheld Satan fall like lightning from heaven. When? When he received the power and authority of his father at the Jordan River? As a result, he, along with the 70, had power over all the power of the enemy. Friend, if Satan is an angel, he is not a good angel gone bad. The Lord was clear about this, telling the Jews, He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Seven heads, seven denoting fullness and manifestation. And whatever this manifestation is, it continues from the dragon to the beast. But it's the beast that opens our understanding, Strong's defines the word beast as a small but dangerous animal, defined by three animal likenesses, a leopard, bear, and lion. A leopard will never act like a bear, nor will a bear ever act like a lion. A lion will never act like a leopard or bear. It is impossible because it is not their nature. Oxford Languages defines nature as the basic or inherent features of something especially when seen as characteristic of it. So what do the seven heads represent? They are the fullness and manifestation of the carnal nature as typified by its beastly characteristics. That being said, consider the following. These six things the Lord hates, yes. Seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Note how these passages are rendered. The first five make up the whole person, beginning with a proud look in the head and ending with feet that are swift in running to evil. The sixth sums up what this person is when they consist of the first five that is, a false witness who speaks lies. The seventh, being manifestation, 
shows what this person does, which is so discord among brethren. Whereas the three features of the beast denote a complete witness of man's carnal nature, the seven heads denote the fullness and manifestation of the carnal mind. And what is true of the dragon is true of the beast. Another difference between the dragon and the beast is the seven crowns on the dragon's head. Seven being fullness points to the following. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Finally, we have the ten horns, and in Revelation 13, 1, we see crowns on them. Look once more at its spiritual meaning from Stephen Jones. Ten is the number of divine order being reestablished one way or another through the judgment of the law, as pictured by the Ten Commandments. In other words, it manifests the actual sentence of the law, which follows the gathering and presentation of the evidence. After the Holy Spirit has revealed the evidence to expose men's hearts, that is, number nine, the judge reveals the law, that is, he pronounces the sentence, that is, number 10, according to the law. 10 is the number that portrays that time of judgment when men either receive reward or come under divine judgment. One way or another, the law must be fulfilled and the divine order re-established. The 10 horns, they represent a time of judgment, aligning with the cry of the souls under the altar in the fifth seal, the great day of their wrath in the sixth seal. And of course, the judgment of Babylon is pictured in Revelation, chapters 17 and 18. Now, here's the main reason why the beast rising from the sea is different from the dragon. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Do you see it? The great harlot Babylon sits on many waters, yet is seen sitting on a scarlet beast. We are told the waters are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. In other words, Gentiles, which means that the beast consists of the same. If the dragon represents the religious system of the Jews in Jesus' day, then the beast of the sea represents the religious system of the Gentiles from the days of the early church until now. And the same carnality that marked the Jewish system also marks the Gentile system. How do we know? Due to the rise of Satan in the first four churches. Further confirmation is found in the fact that the beast which comes up out of the earth denotes the collective false prophet or spirit of Antichrist. We're told that this beast exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Don't the false prophets today seek our allegiance to their religious structures and concepts, so much so that they condemn those who do not agree with them? By the way, what is meant by his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. The stars of heaven speak of the seven spirits of God. And the tail? It's explained by the following. The elder and honorable, he is the head. The prophet who teaches lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and those who are led by them are destroyed. How did Jesus say it? Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Did we destroy this living temple? We did, which correlates with the falling away of the church. However, Jesus said he would raise it up in three days. This correlates with the spiritual fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles. Despite how things may appear, we are headed for light 